University and the Center for putting on this exhibit, particularly on this uh, historic date, uh, December 7th, which defined in many ways the uh, lives of Japanese Americans. And for me, it was uh, a life-shaping experience. I was a child then. I spent um, four and a half years of my childhood incarcerated behind the U.S. barbed wire fences. I, but at that time, I was too young to really understand that uh, experience. And I'd like to go into greater, de greater detail, but uh, I'll be speaking together with uh, David Henry Huang for an hour and a half uh, later this evening, so I won't go too much into that. But my life has been shaped by that uh, internment as uh, a child. Uh, my parents were the ones that really went through that experience. And uh, so when I was a teenager, I wanted to understand more about my childhood imprisonment. I uh, looked in history books and found nothing about it. I read the uh, civics books and read about the shining ideals of our democracy, and I couldn't reconcile the two. And uh, so I engaged my father in long after-dinner conversations, and uh, I learned about not only our family's experience, but about our American democracy. And it took a man who uh, was in prison and in the middle of his life had everything taken from him to explain to me how our democracy works. He said, ours is a people's democracy. It can be as great as a people can be, but it's also as fallible as people are. Our democracy is vitally dependent on people who cherish those ideals and actively engage in the democratic process. And one Sunday afternoon, he took me to downtown Los Angeles to the Adlai Stevenson for President headquarters. And he says, he used to enjoy saying, we volunteered for the Stevenson campaign. Actually, he volunteered me. <laughs> <laughs> I just went along with him. But I, I first understood what my father was talking about from that experience working in the Stevenson campaign. Here were all these passionate people dedicated to what Governor Stevenson stood for, and he was an eloquent uh, articulator of American ideals. And they were committing themselves wholly to, the, to his election. It didn't quite work out the way we wanted to, uh, it to, but my father said that too is part of the democracy. It is a challenge, and you're going to have setbacks. But the important thing is to continue pressing, sometimes holding democracy's feet to the fire, and trying to achieve what the ideals uh, tell us, to make this country a better democracy, to make this country a better America. And uh, so ever since that time, I've been uh, uh, active in uh, engaging with the democratic process. I've been involved in many, many political campaigns, in social justice movements. I was uh, in the, uh, involved in the civil rights movement inspired by Dr. Martin Luther King. I was involved in the peace movement during the Vietnam War. And when the uh, time, uh, when the uh, Japanese American community began the uh, uh, for, uh, pr uh, pressing for an apology and redress, I became active in that. And uh, those hearings were deeply moving to me. Congress created a, com a commission to hear um, all the arguments for and against the internment of Japanese Americans. And I saw groups of, of uh, <coughs> Japanese Americans go down to that long <coughs> table and testify, and many spoke about their experiences, their heartfelt experiences for the first time. Many broke down and cried, and I cried with them. And then another group of white-haired people would go down and testify. They were Caucasian, and from them, I heard the same 
rhetoric that I read about and my father told me about, those hateful words that we are inscrutable, that we cannot be trusted, we are devious. Why were we in the fishing industry right on the coast? Very suspicious. Why were we farming near high tension wires? It's all a calculated plot. All these arguments from these white haired old people. <laughs> and when I cried with the Japanese American old people, but with those white, uh, white haired Caucasian people, my blood was burning. And I understood again, re understood, why we have to be actively engaged. Our democracy is always a challenge. You've got to struggle for it. And so we've been doing that on, on many levels. I've been going on speak, <clears throat> speaking tours, and uh, we founded a museum called the Japanese American National Museum in Los Angeles. It's an affiliate of the Smithsonian. And we send our exhibits throughout the country and also internationally. We should be called the Japanese American International Museum <laughs> because we've sent exhibits to Japan to uh, have the people of Japan understand what those people that left Japan and came to this country experienced. We also uh, have sent exhibits to Brazil. And so we have been talking about the internment of Japanese Americans as a lesson in democracy. And that effort has become more powerfully relevant to our times today. Allegiance was, is another way of telling that story. The speaking tours and founding a museum was one way of doing it. It's essentially academic, reaches here. But through popular theater, Broadway theater, a musical of all things, and people always used to guffaw when we told them we're doing a musical on the internment. Uh, but that mu uh, mu a musical hits deeply into the emotions, and people can connect with the characters on stage. And Japanese Americans are culturally rather contained. They don't express themselves outwardly. And, but through musical theater, you, people can suddenly go into an exposition of what they're feeling. The anguish, the anger, the love, the fear. And so we chose the, a form of musical theater. And it's been a struggle again also to bring that story to uh, Broadway. It's been, um, my husband is telling me like this. <laughs> I'm over talking. <laughs> so uh, we have it on the Broadway stage, and you are complimenting it with this exhibit here and adding another angle to it. The ability, we talk about gamma, the to bite the book, to contain the the anger or the pain, but also maintaining your dignity. Gamma. Gamma.